one thing just staying in getting like we do here, you know, you get to grow, you get to feed, you get, you get the word of God, everything's here for you, and make you go, no, ask you to go out, what's that like, I mean, taking this out? You know, at first it's a little scary, and you get, you know, a little drawn into yourself, but once you do it, and you get blessed, and you get fed, then you just want more and more, you just get hungry. Well, oh, she's feisty, isn't she? Man, she's come alive. Where is she? Is it good out here? Yeah. Yeah, I, got, I found some people speaking, you know, Spanish speakers. So I got blessed and I got to joke God and rejoice and, you know, to share Jesus. Some people receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And so for me, it's, a, you know, more than, I, I can say that it's a lot of uh, happiness in my heart because to share Jesus for me is, like the, these people never be. Oh, you're gonna be preaching up. You know what? <laughs> we used to we used to feed a couple hundred people every day, down cats. And once a week, I got two of these things hooked on my bus, and they come off real fast. And we get down there. And Marie used to take one, and she walked all oh, my land, all around that area down there, all by herself, carrying that cross. It, it's just so it's just so neat though when God puts this in your heart, and then you're willing to do it, right, James? Yes. All right, God bless you. Go get him. We got some graduates. If I can find them here, Ryan. so easy for me, so easy to just accept the blessings and do what I'm supposed to do, because if you can just humble yourself a little bit and listen yes. to the people over you, even if you don't know how to do it, they will show you, because they want you to get to that point, and, and you know, there's there's always going to be somebody over you, all the way to the top, there's going to be somebody over you, but they'll, they'll help you through it, they really, truly will. How about Amy over that way? You know what I'm talking about? He's, this, he was, he's graduated for first phase, but he's, he's been in a leadership position. Is basically a cop. Security. <laughs> and he's had a lot of things coming against him. <laughs> but evidently, listen to this. God can use anybody, no matter what you've done. A lot of these guys have been out of prison are tough. But when God gets a hold of them, he makes them tougher. But they're, they're able to deal with stuff that a lot of other people aren't able to deal with. You know, people get in their face. So God will put them in that position because He's not going to give us any more than He can handle. God's not giving anybody any more than they can handle. Amen. I've been sitting back watching Him, man. He's zealous. <laughs> what are you going to do now? Uh, second phase staff as the, as the director of security. Yes, I got my tag showing my parking place. We appreciate that. Did you see it? Absolutely, I got it for you. Yeah. <laughs> they said, you better get it. Yeah. You know, it's so neat, though. He's graduated with honors. Just to see God be God. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
definitely a time of correction and just to face my my problems and fears and, and be a better influence to my kids who are watching. I love you guys. This is for you. And um, it changed my life. I had a addiction for about 13 years and it's time to get it right. Okay, How was the second phase as compared to the first phase? Uh, second phase was a little struggle because I had more time to be out there in the world and I wanted to be there with my kids. But I had to humble myself and know that if I could do this another six months and just get it right working and and to be stronger for them. Where are you going to go? Um, I'm going to do 2.5 for another two months and then be with my kids and move to Colorado. Thank you. Fix it up. Broken, no matter what. He does that if we're simply living. Well, she's graduating with honors. kind of working, he's been a working man. God's been using him in education and everything else. We're going to talk a little bit about something else in a minute or two, but what he's been able to do has been so neat. He's, God's given him a lot of ability, but he's been able to, to step up. Now, it's not availability, it's availability. Because I'm going to tell you what, I don't care how good you are, if you can't hang in there, what are you good for? I can say that. <laughs> really, I did. It's just so neat to watch. And he's been working with us in the Green Beret and doing a whole lot of different yeah. things, outreaches yeah. and so forth. And he's graduating, and I guess he's got his grandparents here. Yeah. It was awesome. I love this place. I kid you not. I came back. I came here about you know two years ago, a little over two years ago, and. This place saved my life. I've been appreciated for a while. I actually kid you not, April 2nd, the year 2000, is the year that this woman been praying for me and I actually became a Christian on April 2nd today in the year 2000. So, Grandmother, I thank you. Christian walk, you know, things happen and so forth, and I fell away, but I got to a place where I just, I, you know, hope was stolen from me. And I kid you not, and the wilderness, there truly is an oasis, and it's here at the Phoenix Dream Center. This has been a spiritual oasis to awaken again hope when I thought all was lost. When I thought everything was done, I would have the highs of life. And man, it feels like in days it was just gone. And I thank the Lord that this place has really, you know, provided the opportunity for me to gain hope again, to gain back that fire, to be under the anointing again. Thank you, grandmother and grandfather, for praying for me. Dr. Carla, as well as Dr. Beverly for standing there. And thank you most of all, Ms. Louine and Pastor Wall for your wonderful example. Allow me to come in and just allow God to do what only he could do. I'm telling you, this place really works. It really works. Stick in there. It really works. And get that dream, whatever it is, God will do it again. Man, there's some things in my heart that, again, I just thought were impossible. And he's doing it right before my eyes. So I'm just so blessed to be in this place. And I thank you all. through all that. Next thing you know, I had a passion just letting God be God. To minister to people. Go out the street and start preaching, which I did. 
Actually, find a place for him to go on and on, and we ended up with something like this. And one day, Pastor Barnett came up to me and he says, Pastor, he said, Walt, he said, do you think you should be licensed or ordained? I don't know, Pastor, what do you think? He said, well, probably won't hurt nothing, so let's do it. And ever since then, I just said, you know, God knows what he's doing. He's the one that calls. You know, when people, it's interesting, you know, you let God be God. He'll work with you different. I've had so many people come up here up to me and say, Will you ordain me? I said, I can't. Only God can ordain me. Yes. Good word. In fact, only God can call. Right. Only God can heal, deliver, set free. Right. It's not by works and righteousness, it's by His mercy. Right. And so God put it in my heart, we're going to ordain Him today. Yeah. He's going to be a Wants him. Yes. Because he's good. Yes. That's right. In fact, he's been pulled out of different jobs, different places, right in the middle of God's will. And I don't know what he's getting into. I know what he's getting into, but he doesn't. You know, the job of pastor is to keep the saints from killing you and each other. But God's called him. Would you just kind of pray a little prayer here? I grab I hear so much about you and the power of God, how everything, you know, is just God got a hold of you, and here we are. I just praise the Lord today. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Woo! And to all the ministers and each and everyone in this place here today, I'm just glorifying in God. I am a little horse because I have a cold, but I just thank God for Jesus today. Amen. One day when I was down and low, God reached out his mighty hand and he rescued a wretch like me. And today I'm praising God. I'm originally from Jamaica, but I've been here now over 40 years. But I go to Jamaica each time because I have a place down there. I just thank God for Jesus today. One day when I was lost, when I was undone, he rescued a wretch like me. And I'm praising God today. And I go to the church every day, Pentecostal church. I just talk about the judges at 16th Street between um, in Southern and Broadway. I just thank God for Jesus today, and I thank God for my grandson. Because from when he was way down, he used to study the Bible from the Genesis and the Revelation. Sometimes if I could get something, I call and say, Danny, where you find such and such a scripture? He just tell me by his heart. You know, because it seemed like his mother said he wasn't. He was giving him another name, but God gave him a dream to give him the name Daniel. He has lost his mother when he was 19 years old, and his sister was 16. But God still keep him. He lost his house, he had a house down there, and he lose his house and everything. But God still keep him. God is a heavy God. God is a heavy God. I came here from Jamaica. When I came here, I worked with Motorola for 25 years. I worked with the county hospital for five years. But God still keep me, you know, to still keep me. And I love God today because when I was down, he rescued me. Yeah. And I'm happy for my grandson today. I'm happy for him. Thank you. Amen. Pastor, come on up here. We're going to have a hard pastor. All right, pastor, pastor. 
Yeah, it's a very special, special day. We're just going to anoint him and just let the Holy Spirit just lead and guide him. Because we got some really neat ideas and plans for him to help us out. He's going to fit in perfectly. Heavenly Father, you didn't choose us. And we didn't choose you, you chose us and ordained us. Well, you're truly going to ordain him as a pastor, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we just pray that God, you just give him everything he needs, the power, the authority, the courage, all of it, the humbleness to be willing to, to be a servant. And I pray he be a servant. Use him mightily then just to build your kingdom, build people that he can be the disciple builder, encourager, using Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, here's another one. Yeah. And here's the part. Here's the part. Let's just go on for victory. We're doing this for Jesus' name. So let's build the kingdom of God and establish it here on earth. Well, we're going to take communion. Forget this. Whoever's going to pass them out, the elders, the pastors, everybody, take the elements. And we'll tell you what to do with them. You know, I'll tell you what is so neat about, I believe, what we're doing is we're living this out. It's a lie. There's nothing can, meaning, you know, really plan. It's just, it's just letting God simply be God. And one of the things we're going to do today is remember what He did for us on the cross. And he paid a terrible, 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 terrible price for you and I on that cross. So I just want to kind of share just a little message. Now actually, you could say it's just God sending his word forth to accomplish what God wants to accomplish because he said he's going to send his his word forth, and it's not going to return empty or void. It's going to accomplish what God wants to accomplish. Young people, it's bringing you to Him if you don't know Him. Whether you're in prisons, missions, or just out of prison, missions, out of jail, or many of us that are just here. Some, some of us, you know, have kind of lost, even some of us that are Christians, have kind of lost that edge. We just kind of, you know, pulling back a little bit. But God wants to sharpen us up again. He wants to become more alive in us. He's calling. He's speaking to us. And His Word then is going to accomplish that. And for those that don't know Him, His Word is going to go penetrate your heart. And you say, well, I don't know about that. I do. And you're going to have to make a decision. Well, you just turn me off now. You make me mad. I don't make none of this. That's a gracious thing. If you just said that, you made your decision. It's no. I want nothing to do with God. I did not. Yeah, you did. And this is what I so neat about God. He didn't come to condemn us. He came to save us. It's His will that none perish. Oh, be brought under repentance. So when His word goes forth, He just wants to invite you to come to Him he, so you, He can commit to actually live inside of us. To give us all His attributes, love and joy, all the above, and to give us new hearts, new minds, new purpose. And then use us to go show the world what we can do with people who listen to Him. And that's us. And then it becomes so, I don't, I'm going to get to preaching now. That becomes exciting, but what He's saying is, my word is going forth. Yes. It's my will that none perish. All have sinned, I'm sure the glory of God, the wages of sin is death, but the gift, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible says, for God commanded his love towards us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. The Holy Spirit is moving. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. That's the door of your heart. If you open the door, and nobody can open it from you, from the inside, if you open the door, he, he, he's going to come in because you're going to let him in. 
But if you don't, then he, there's nothing he can do. He's a gentleman. He's given us choice, which is a terrible thing, or it's a wonderful thing. We get to choose. He loves us. He didn't come to condemn us. He came to save us. Can you open the door of your heart? Because he's knocking. Now, knocking means he's got to put the desire in your heart. He has got to put the want to in you. If you don't want to, you're not going to do it. But he's, he's, he's knocking loud and he's knocking strong. Are you listening? You can answer the call. Heavenly Father, I just pray, Lord, just the Spirit of God go so freely and strongly here in the hearts of your people today that there won't be one that will deny you. I pray that. But God, you've given us choice. And I pray for those that are struggling on the fence. Help them realize it's not them that does this. It's you. It's not them that has to be good. It's you working in us, giving them desire, the power, everything we need to be good. Help them and all of us to realize this is your ball game, not ours. And all we need to do is yield. Pray with me. Say, Dear God, Dear God I know what you want me to do. I know what you want me to do. Simply yield to you. I want to do that. Jesus, you are dealing with me. I know what you want me to do is turn my life over to you. I believe you died in that cross for my sins and set me free because you cared for me. And I'm just asking you then, will you come into my life? Change my life. Guide me. Lead me. Show me what your plan is for me. And if I know it's you, I'm going to say, I'll do it. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 How many feel the power of God? How many get your sense? In fact, let's do it this way. How many of you just said, Lord, I'll do what you want me to do? I want you to raise your hand. Hey, I'm down with it. If you knew it was God and He was dealing with you today, will you do what He wanted you to do? Yes. yes. Amen. I tell you what, I got my hands up, my feet up, everything else, because I know that's what it takes, because my own self, I can do nothing. And that's the neatest thing. You know, this, this, this gospel is so real. That the Apostle Paul was persecuting the church. He was against it. He was against Jesus. Everything because he was raised religious and he was very, very zealous. And many of us are very, very zealous. You know, a lot of people that are successful in life, they got to be zealous. They push everybody out of the way so they accomplish what they want. That's the way Paul was. All of a sudden, he had an encounter with Jesus. And his life was so touched and changed because of that encounter that he switched gears. He switched polarity. He was crucifying them, killing them, basically. Then he turned around and went the other way because God had so changed him. And that's the same way with some of you guys that are struggling in admission or whatever, what's happening in your life or even the rest of us. But we're talking about the power of God. We're not talking about human understanding. We're not talking about churchiosity. We're not talking about joining something that seems to be religious. We're talking about the power of God. Yeah. And it changed Paul. And you know what he says? In uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 23, For I have received from the Lord that which I also deliver to you. He's talking about Paul that just went through all this stuff. He's re he received from him that wants to share it with us. Telling us that the Lord, on the same night in which he be, was betrayed, just before he was going to be betrayed, he knew all this. He cared enough for his disciples to show them how much he loved him and what, what he was going to do for them. And that's what he wants to show us. And that's what the Apostle Paul is talking about. And when he had given thanks, he broke bread. He said, take eat. This is my body. In other words, he was mutilated, beat, torn. The Bible said his visage, his body was so marred you couldn't even recognize it. For you and I. And this was just before he was going to go through that. He did this. But he wanted them to know and he wants us to know what he did for us. He says, do this in remembrance. Remember what he did. 
They'll encourage you and refresh us. Let's take this. In the same manner, he also took a cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. You know what the new covenant is? We're no longer under sin. That's been defeated in our lives. We're under the grace of God. The power of God's in us now. We can go to Him anytime we want. It's not like in the Old Testament when they can man who is in the presence of God once a year and only one man. Each one of us can go here. Even who we are, where we've been. Can you imagine that? This is the, the new covenant which is in my blood. Do this often as you remember me. Let's, let's be partakers remembering what he did. I thank you, Lord, that you've done all this for us. God, thank you. Make yourself so real to us. Which you will if we'll just simply let you. So I just want to just pray, God, for these dear people, for us. That you just, we get focused on you. And we're anticipating the marching orders that you have for us. Now we, we know, without a shadow of a doubt, if we yield to you, your force ain't nothing going to be against us. Nothing that's going to stop you using us to do what you want. That's building your kingdom for your glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't have a whole lot of time. But that's okay. It's just letting God have His way, the one He wants, the way He wants to do things. How many believe that? Well, let's talk about perseverance. What is perseverance? That's the steadfast effort to follow God's commands and to do His work. Just like we just did. Right now, we made a decision: either to serve God or not serve God. Now it's all, but everything's based on a decision. You make a decision, and that God will give you what you need to persevere, no matter what. If we make the decision, we're going to hang in there. God's going to help us. I got up this morning. I always do on Sundays. I work out a little bit, and then I run. Well, but my back, back's been kind of bothering me here and there, you know. And sometimes I have trouble even walking. So this morning I got up and I was doing okay with bed presses and I could do some other stuff. And I said, ah! I go inside, you know, I'm going to run. Yeah. I told him, we went out the door, came back two minutes, two seconds later. I, back, I, couldn't even, I couldn't even hardly walk or run. And I said, you know what? Something's inside me. And this is, what, this is what I've been ever since I got saved. There's a perseverance, there's a fight, there's something in there. And I said, Dwayne, you think heat will help? So she's sitting on this little heating pad. So she, she gets the thing out, lay it on the floor. I lay down there, put a little heat on the thing. I get up, open the door, get out my ran. And I got to, come on, come on, let's get a little bit of on. You know, the thing was so neat about God, He's the one that puts a desire in your heart to persevere, to hang in there, to not quit. He does it. You say, well, they, they quit. No, maybe they didn't quit. Here's the, here's the thing that I found out. Perseverance is sometimes is you get your own thing, doing your own thing, and you ain't going to quit, and God says, no, I want you to quit. <laughs> so when you say, how's that got to do with persevering? Because you're persevering into the calling of God. You understand that? But besides, it's not up us. It's not up to us to judge other people. It's God. When He's working in us, He's the one who's going to keep us, give us the fire that we want to, to keep on going. What do you think about all that? Man, I tell you, I got, I'm getting so more excited about just living for God. Now, through the ups and downs of life, boy, I wish I had a whole lot of time. God called Abraham. He says, "Leave home, go." He says, go on your journey, because I'm, I'm going to use you, give you a people that's going to be my people forever and ever. He had more ups and downs, more struggles, more problems. Man, he had, everybody was against him at one time. He had to leave the country, hide, and then he had to lie about his wife. And then, you know, they're going to, he's trying to pray for his, 
his nephew Lot that's in Sodom and on and on and on, you know, and they're supposed to kill his son, his firstborn son, but in the meantime, he went and had another son because he couldn't wait on God by his handmaiden. And over the years, but he was able to persevere. I know for me, I've been able to persevere, and I'll tell you something that's more fun than ever before. More battles, more struggles. Just like this morning. If God's for us, He's going to give us what we need. How many believe that? Just like when He called Abraham, He called Abraham. And through all the ups and downs, no matter what, He chose us and called us. One of my favorite scriptures is 1 Corinthians 15, 57, and 58. But thanks be to God, He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always giving yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because we know that the labor of the Lord is not in vain. Therefore, we simply need to set our minds. Set our minds on His Word. And then be doers. Be, being steadfast, by the way, God's going to mature us. You know what I'm saying? You hang in there. God's going to mature you. No, I don't have a whole lot of time, so if I go a little fast, don't worry about it. But God's got to do it anyway. What if you let Him? <laughs> Romans 5. 1 through 5. Therefore have been justified by faith. That's what we, We're saved by faith. And that's what we just talked about here. It's God's plan. It's... We become a Christian, He starts to torn us, but you've got to be saved and be under the, the power of God, right? So we're justified by faith. We have peace with God That's right. through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom also we have access by faith into His grace in which we stand. Rejoice in hope and the glory of God. Not only that, <clears throat> everybody clear their throat, clear their ears. <laughs> <laughs> I got to clear mine, but you clear your mind. Not only that, but also glory in tribulations. Yeah. Where he's maturing us. Glory, glory in tribulations. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. perseverance. Yeah. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> perseverance, character. We got some characters. No. That's a different kind of character. And character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint. See how he's maturing us? Through perseverance? Through the struggles? Through the ups and downs? Because the love of God has been poured into our hearts. See the maturity thing? How he's developed us. He raises up. He uses through these different things. Boy, the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Now it seems like no matter what we do, it costs. No matter how bad it is, old Joe's out there, we seem to always get it done. Amen. Man, I can't tell you how many times this ain't working, that ain't working, but we're still working. God's working, you know what? And if we're working and we're willing to let God work, He's working through us to accomplish what He wants. No matter what comes against us, we hit it head on and persevere until it's done. That's why I said, I think old Joe out there, that old rascal has been hanging in there fighting this good fight for over 20 some years. You, you, know, you don't know a lot of the stuff he does. And everything, the battles and struggles, all you know is Joe's Joe. He's just he's in there, you know. And that's the same with some of the rest of us. You don't know what's going on inside of us. And I'll tell you something. This is the funniest thing. I've heard, I've seen so many preacher's kids. I ain't going to be a preacher because I know what my parents went through. No, you don't know what your parents went through. You thought your parents went through something that you thought they went through. They didn't go through what they, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They went through something that really perfected them. Right. Put the perseverance in them. Right. Yes. Now, if you want to get out of the ball game and snivel and do whatever you're saying and do something <laughs> else, you go right ahead. But if you want to serve God, I mean, live this life to the fullest. The Holy Spirit's going to be in you. Accomplishing only what God can accomplish. Not leading to your understanding your own mind or power, because it's not by might or by power, it's by my spirit. Let that happen to you. Think about all that. Man, it gets better and better and better and better and better. 
You know, God said it. That settles it. That's good enough for me. Let's just persevere that until it comes to pass. Let's simply let God be God. What do you think about all that? It's cool. You know, the Bible says it's Matthew. Give the Lord a good thing, You know, the Bible says Matthew 24:13. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. What do you think about all that? It's all good. Okay, now let's go over to Hebrews, you know the coffee maker? 12, which we talked about, which we read. 12, 1. Therefore, we also, since we have been surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, that's the people who went before us. It's the whole 11th chapter basically of Hebrews, showing us what they did. And by the way, you know what? I'll tell you what, you can do what you want to do. You can talk, 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 and I've been around long enough, huh? And some of you are good talkers, you know what I'm talking about. But there ain't nothing behind your talk to talk. I mean, you can talk a good, good, good game. You, we can do this, let's do this, let's do that. Let's say, fine, show me. Anybody shows me, I got to shut my mouth. They're doing it. Now, if I decide to do it, fine. If I don't decide to do it, but I can't judge. And when I see them doing it, for me to cop out. So and he says, we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. It shows us what people have done in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Witnesses for us. God just ain't going to throw us out there. Yeah. He's going to give us everything we need to realize that we can do this. The confidence to know if he began the good work, he's going to continue it. Yeah. Don't matter what, what seems to be going on in your life. It's what the Word of God says. You stay focused on him, you're going to see it. So, what does he say? Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance or perseverance the race is set before us. Now, I, Randy is going to have to help me with this one. The Greek word for endurance, perseverance is Huplo Mane. Is that how you pronounce it, Randy? Close? Pretty close, okay. And what it's saying is, it's the spiritual power. Yes. Now, I don't know if you got that one or not. It's not just the word, it's the spiritual power. God empowers that, He's behind it. Put His money where His mouth is. Given us the desire at all. So with the endurance, let us run with endurance, or with persistence, the race that is set before us. Because God is there. Amen. You know, with this kind of perseverance, neither violent manner, no matter what people are going to come against us, fighting us or anything else, nor the power of Satan can stop it. It's the quality that keeps a man on his feet. Amen. You got that video? Uh -huh. Get that video ready. And I'll tell you what, you can face anything with this. No matter how hard the trial, whoever it is, God's going to give you what it takes to get through. Let's watch this video.
let the Holy Spirit deal with you on that. It's resolve. It's determined. It's a determination to go the distance. Look at other Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, who was before, came before us. Amen. Look at other Jesus. His father came out of the stands. Jesus came out of heaven. Our father's down here with us, inside of us. Yes. Everything he had, he gave to Jesus. Everything Jesus has, he's given us. He's inside of us. Yes. So he's going to run that race with us. Yes. He's going to be the encourager. Yes. He's going to be everything we need yes. if we just let him. Yes. And I, you know, I, I'm telling you, I, this morning I think, man, I can't do this. Like, but I can't stop. And as soon as I got to run a little bit, the pain ate easy. I, you know what I, I found? I was fighting this morning. I was fighting with God. God, I'm going to do this. And I run up this little hill over and come back down, you know. And I said, I, I can't. And the more I did it, the more I, the, I forgot about me. Yeah. Next thing you know, I got about halfway done. Right. Right. Then I sped up. <laughs> and a little pain, I can take that little pain, you know. Yeah. Because God says, listen. And I'm fighting him. Pray, God, I need help on this. Come on, come on. Yeah. He needed help. His dad was down there to help. We need help. You need help. I need help. We can't do this of ourselves. But God will give you the guts, the courage. He puts that desire in your heart. What's that word I just talked about? It's a, it's a spiritual power. Hoopa Monday. Or however they pronounce it. It's real. It's alive. It's God working in us, doing His will and His good pleasure. You know, when you let God be God, He completely changes the way you think. He gives you new desires, new hopes when these other things start coming against you. Well, God, if, I'll tell you what, God, I'm going to keep going as long as I can. If I can't do it, i got enough sense to quit. I was trying to get, well, I was lifting weights this morning, I was trying to get the bar in my head, and I couldn't do it. And I knew better. I said, okay, for me to quit is no, no, no. But then I had, when I started running, and even when I came back, after running, I took some of the weight off and I did it. Because I'm going to go as hard as I can go. I'm not going to let myself quit. Yeah. Jesus, he endured the cross. Yeah. What did it say? Looking at Jesus, you ought to finish our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured, persevered, the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God. The joy that was set before him. That, that motivated him. <laughs> Think about that. I was so excited about Hey, I'm almost done. And it was a joy of, hey, I'm getting it done. I did it. I can live with myself. I don't know what your thing is, but it's just knowing. Then I said, you know, I got something to preach about today. Amen. It's real to me. Maybe not them. There's nothing hypocritical about that. Because it's simply, simply, simply just letting God be God. He's chosen us. He's called us. He's got a plan for each and every one of us. Let's find out what that's all about. Well, that joy, that peace that's been set before us. By the way, we got everything here we need at Church on the Street. You know, it's two God's developing. Add to your faith, virtue to virtue, knowledge to knowledge, self-control to self-control, perseverance to perseverance, godliness, godliness, brotherly kindness. See, he's developing that. You know what brotherly kindness is? That's the ape, the agape, love of God. He's developing us little by little as we go. He goes, like in a race, you just keep going, you just keep going. Next thing you know, man, the next thing you know, you got the love of God motivating you. Give you that new heart, that new mind, that new want to. And that's what is so exciting. Sit back and watch. You know, I just think it's about that old rascal that was up here a minute ago, just got ordained. Yeah. Just see, God brought him from where he was. His grandparents were here. Just think about where you came, where you're going. Now let's see what's going to happen next. 
He's going to bring him up to another level. Are you going to let God bring you up to another level? You want to? How many deep down in your heart you can say, you know what? God give me perseverance. Add to your faith. You give faith virtue. The virtue of knowledge. Knowledge self-control. The self-control, by the way, some of us need self-control. He'll give us self-control. And the self-control, perseverance. And then brotherly kindness. And then brotherly love. Why don't you turn to one next to you? How many got ought to get somebody here? Don't you? No. Maybe that's the thing you need to do today. Just resolve it in your mind. Make a decision like we were talking about before. To just let God help you through that. Maybe that's like me with my, my pain in my back. Oh, well, you got a pain in something else. Huh? How many willing to listen to God? Listen. Okay. I want you to be honest. Truly honest with yourself. If you really want to do what God wants you to do, and He'll show you, will you say you'll do it? Yes. Confess before men, and I'll confess before my Father which is in heaven. Stand up. You'll do. You're, you're saying in your heart, you'll do what God wants you to do. 24-7. If He shows you. Any kids sitting down over there? No. They want to Man, they got the energy. They're the ones who should be busted loose. Tiny, I want you to pray us out. Dear Lord, I want to live the life that you gave me to live. Be patient. I'm grateful for that. I picked you as a leader. So lead us this whole week and the rest of our lives. I plan on running the race to the end. Great I'm going to be a winner. In God's name, thank you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Shake hands with somebody.